Hi everyone, my name is Hayden and I'm here today to talk to you about image types. Image types fall into the HTML category, uh, essentially just the introduction to web category. And the point of this lecture is to not only understand what an image is in terms of how it's used on the internet, but the different types of image formats that exist and why we might use different types of image formats. Now, you're familiar that the internet has images, right? You're familiar with this because you go to Google Images and you see a whole bunch of images here. And they all kind of do the same thing. Their aim is to convey information to you by uh, you know, essentially rendering pixels on the screen. A lot of these have different image types though. You can see this one here, Google's telling me that one's a JPEG, that one's a JPEG. Um, a lot of images like this will be JPEGs, but if I type in something different on the internet, for instance, like blue circle, we're gonna see that the types of images um, are different. For instance, this one is a PNG, 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 PNG. Um, these are all PNGs and these two are JPEGs. And it's like, what is the difference between these, right? They all look like blue circles. And that's really what we're gonna try and um, you know, get into. So as we said, all of these images are about rendering a collection of pixels on the screen to help provide some kind of visual. Um, and you've seen JPEGs and PNGs, but there are also these other formats that you're probably familiar with in some way, such as GIFs or GIFs, um, as well as SVGs and BMPs if you, you know, maybe you've seen those around, maybe you did a course where you had to manipulate one or perhaps even uh, you uh, used Microsoft Paint back in the day, right? If you wanna learn more about these image types, you can go and check out this article. This is essentially just a quick pro and con of different image types. It's a good little reference point so you don't have to like come and watch this. But there's tons of stuff around Google that you can look at to just explain this because these are fairly introductory concepts. Now. Before we dig into more about what these image types are, it's important that we understand the two kind of key categories of image types, which are vector images and raster images. Now, there is a great lecture in, um, in this course on SVGs, uh, which are vector images. And it's worth going and watching that because I think there's a good comparison in there of the difference between a vector image and a raster image. Vector images are essentially these, um, you know, kind of computed images. It's like there's just instructions about how to draw something. But most of the images that you're probably familiar with, are, oop, that way, down here, are these raster images because raster images are literally just a collection of pixels um, in some kind of color space. It can vary per image, but you can really trivially visualize them as a 2D array of colors, right? And that's what it looks like here. It's uh, columns and rows and there's colors in each cell. And that's what all of these different types of, you know, JPEG, uh, PNG, GIF, GIF, they're all the same thing. They're all collections of just colored pixels in some kind of structure. Now, raster images have downsides um, compared to vector images. But again, we're not here to compare them today. We're just here to learn about what these different types of raster images are. So here is a really simple table kind of comparing bitmaps um, I, I call them GIFs, um, JPEG, PNGs, and you know essentially how they work. Um, I think some of the key things to notice here are that you've probably mostly seen JPEGs and PNGs, right? And there's a reason for that. It's because they don't have any any of the kind of base limitations that bitmaps and, and um, GIFs have. A bitmap image is quite literally quite literally a two D array of um, uh, colors, right? It's it's what you'd expect. If you could go and make a BMP yourself, uh, it's something we used to get students to do. You go and open up a text editor and you essentially can like fill in hex codes and you can make your own little BMP. It doesn't use any compression. It's, it's not lossy. Lossy is when you lose some quality of image. Um, and I wrote uses no because it's just not really used much, um, honestly, anymore. But you'll see it floating around. It's kind of like the, the, the literal image. Um, you know, GIFs though you might have heard about a little bit more, but we'll come back to those at the end. Let's focus on the two kind of heavy hitters of images, which is JPEGs and PNGs. Now, when we talk about the format is like 24-bit or 16 to 24-bit, what this is usually referring to is um, it's kind of like if you understand basic computing theory, an 8-bit number is an, an 8-bit memory address or an 8-bit value can store a certain number of numbers, right? A 24-bit set of numbers can store massively more amount, of, a massively larger amount of data. So JPEGs and PNGs can store more data per pixel, 
right? That's what this is saying. This is like a per pixel. And what does more data per pixel mean? It means more subtlety in color. And you could probably find this out if you like look up 8-bit versus 24-bit image, um, because quite often you can see the difference. Um, you know, like your, here's just like a quick example. It's like, this is not a great example, but it's like 8-bit images will only have so many colors compared to 16-bit images, which have tons more. So if you've ever gone and like found like an old school looking image that seems to have, you know, not as much kind of color detail, it looks, you might say, oh, it looks a little bit low quality. Sometimes that's actually because they're using less colors. This is like a, a good example here, right? Like this is trying to describe the sky and the sky is a very nuanced color, right? This is 24 verse 48. Now, you don't need to worry about the numbers or anything like that, but I'm just trying to convey the point that um, higher bit rates mean higher quality because it's more shades of a color you can put in an image. So PNGs and JPEGs are pretty good on that in that area. They are both compression-based image formats, which means that they actually do compress the image um, so that unlike BMPs, which literally store all of the raw data, um, PNGs and JPEGs will actually store like a compressed version of it. Now, this is not a course about compression. Compression is essentially just a way of trying to represent the same information in a smaller space. But here's where kind of the key difference is. JPEG is what we call a lossy compression format. A lossy compression format means that when it compresses, it actually loses some detail in the attempt to make things like very um, not using up a lot of memory. Whereas a lossless compression format doesn't lose that. So the way images work is like if you ha take a photo, right, and you compress it, when you uncompress it, the question is, was it the original image quality, right? Like, is it indistinguishable from the original? If the answer is yes, then it's what we call lossless because nothing has been lost in that process of compression and uncompression. And if it's lossy, it means that something has. Um, now, that's really the key difference between JPEGs and PNGs. Now, what I'm gonna show you is an example of me trying to export a PNG um, in a lossy and lossless format, basically via a PNG and a JPEG to kind of understand the difference. So what I've got up here is I've actually got an image that I want to take you through and compare and contrast the difference between like a PNG and a JPEG. Um, this is actually a JPEG taken off the internet. Most normal images are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and save this image and I want to show you the difference with like how a JPEG gets saved um, versus a PNG. So I'm just using Photoshop at the moment. And if I open up the save pop up, um, here's what we can see together. Uh, what I have here is I have me trying to export the image as a PNG 24. Now PNG 24 is essentially like the normal way to export a PNG because it, uh, it is 24 bits. And I can actually show you the difference with like a 24 bit PNG and an 8 bit PNG. Cause watch what happens when I go to 8 bit. And I, I'll go zoom in on a few, like I'll go zoom in really close on a few spots. Oh, that's maybe a bit too, maybe a bit too close. Um, you see something like this, right? Now remember how I talked about color space? Look at the difference here. PNG 24 has a much bigger color space because of its high bit rate, and therefore it is able to represent more colors. But PNG 8, it struggles to do that. And that's the same for GIFs because they're all 8 bit. All right, so that's one of the reasons that JPEGs and PNGs or PNG 24 bits are quite popular, or even 16 bits because they represent more colors. Now have a look at the size of this PNG 24. It is a two megabyte image. You can see that down on the bottom left here. It says 2.106 megabytes. Um, if you're not watching this video on 1080p, I would probably recommend you do that. Um, and it looks pretty good. Now let's look at a JPEG. Now a JPEG at what we call 100% quality, i.e. limited to no compression, also looks pretty good. And in fact, if I zoom back in on some of these spots, like here, and maybe I'll zoom in even further so you can really see it. Let's look at the difference between a very lightly compressed JPEG and a PNG 24. It's not very different. In fact, the, I, I can see a couple of very tiny details, but totally indistinguishable effectively. That PNG is two megabytes and that JPEG is 720 kilobytes. Now, there are times when PNGs are better, um, particularly for small icons and stuff. It's not like JPEGs are always better because it is still compression. You are still losing some data. Um, but here's the crazy thing about JPEGs. If you actually turn the quality of a JPEG right down, you can get some crazy compression. 
This is now 42 kilobytes. The PNG was 2000 kilobytes, but look at the quality of this image. It looks awful, right? Absolutely awful. And you'll see if I turn the quality up somewhere in between, it looks like okay, you know? Um, it looks fine. Uh, that pretty indistinguishable from a PNG for like normal consumption. So instead of using a two megabyte PNG, we can use a 300 kilobyte JPEG. Now, why would you not always use JPEGs, right? That's, that would be a reasonable question here. And the answer is because JPEGs are always losing some kind of detail. The reason you don't notice it in an image like this is because this image is already kind of grainy, right? Like it's, I mean, it's already a JPEG. So what that means is that it's already actually lost some detail. You can kind of see the remnants of the compression here from the previous JPEG usage. So for PNGs on the internet, you often will use, um, you'll often use PNGs for things like, oops, sorry. You'll often use PNGs for things like, uh, I've Googled nice image, um, you know, like an icon or something, because a lot of icons will have very subtle detail like this. You know, you might want to keep all these little speckles. If we tried to make that, like P JPEG that, we lose some detail there that's really critical. So it's kind of like, you know, if it was taken with a camera, often you will um, treat it like a JPEG. If it's not taken by a camera, you'll often treat it like a PNG. That's kind of one of the key differences. So. That's why these days we tend to use either of those two formats. Um, the GIF format is still sometimes used. You've probably most often seen it as an animation product, right? Where, uh, you know, you see a GIF on the internet because it's like an image with like frames and it does something. Nowadays, web technology is getting much better and you'll see things like .webm formats, which are essentially like mini videos that you can display on the, um, the internet, which are essentially replacing GIF. So for, for all intents and purposes, in terms of basic image formats, nowadays you're only really concerned with JPEGs and PNGs. Now this leads us on to the last part of today, which is probably going to be important for one of your assessments, is the idea of base64 encoding. Now here is one of the problems with the modern internet. There's tons of, tons and tons and tons of, um, you know, Images everywhere, right? On like tons of websites. Like think about Airbnb as an idea. Realestate.com, you know, um, lots and lots of other things are just images everywhere. And one of the problems is if you follow this link, most web browsers are actually limited by how many images they can get from one um, website, at, one like server at a time. So let's just use Chrome as a benchmark. It can only get six. So what that means is that if your computer tries to load six images from Airbnb, like 12 images from Airbnb, it can only do six at a time asynchronously, like concurrently. And then it has to like, you know, it's only got like six, like think of it like, um, I've only got six hands, you know, so I can only grab six things at a time. I can keep grabbing more, but there's only six I can grab at the same time. Um, so what happened was people started saying, hey, what's the point of like loading up HTML pages where we send you an HTML document and in that HTML document, we then give you like an image tag and tell you, can you then go and load this image, right? Because that's what an HTML page is. It's essentially a page that the server gives you with more instructions about more stuff to get from the server to build a page. So that's where the idea of base64 encoded images came from. And the idea with these was that <clears throat> for small images, when we give an HTML page, and I'll, let me just prepare a quick example for you. So I just made this really quick web page, right? It's super simple. It's just, um, it's just be hello and this image, and I'm gonna give the image um, a width of 400, just so it's a bit smaller. You know, when we have an image like this, that's actually still very big, maybe 200. Um, you know, we have a page like this, that's like hello and then a cat image. For small images, which isn't this cat, what they figured out was that instead of creating an HTML page where I send a URL to then go and fetch, let's actually just send all of the pixel data, like just the image in some kind of, you know, um, it's like you ever tried to open a file, like a, a JPEG in like a notepad or a text editor, and it's like a big bunch of garble. Obviously every file is just a bunch of, um, you know, binary, right? So they're like, let's just send the actual like code for it. So, um, and you can actually see this and Google started doing this too. And you've probably come across this problem. I have to turn off my large image small. Um, 
Have you ever gone on Google and have you ever like clicked on an Im have you ever like seen an image you like and then you've right clicked on it or something and you've gone copy image link and then you pay oh, that one's not a good example I'm sure one of these will do it um, let me just find it really quick you've probably seen this um I don't know graph let's look for small images of graphs on Google if you have a copy image link you'll so oh, I'm on Bing no wonder sorry I use Edge for my lecturing. Um, and I think Google does this and Bing doesn't that much. But if I right click on an image, I was wondering why it wasn't working. You actually see, you ever sent this to a friend? You've been like, oh, check out this image and you paste it in like Facebook and it's like, what? What just happened? What actually happened here is that the image that Google was loading on this page, this page loaded on your browser and then it's not that your browser went and fetched another image from the internet. Your browser actually was given this whole image as part of the loading process. So this image is actually this bunch of code here. That's actually the giraffe. Just compress like just uh encoded in a format that's just made up of ASCII characters essentially. Okay. So now what I can do is instead of putting in the image source on my page, another URL, I can just put in that actual random text as the giraffe image. And then when I go back to my page, I can load that giraffe too. And this is really interesting now because the, my page has only had to load one image. Like it's only had to load the HTML file. Now obviously the HTML file is bigger. It's now bigger because before it was like two lines, now it's like a ton of lines. But from a network perspective, um, I don't have to go and make more requests. So what does this do? It means the initial load of a page is a little slower because the, the file you're getting is bigger, but it means subsequent loads are unnecessary because um, they've been encoded. Now, this doesn't work great for very large images. You'll actually see the way Google does this a lot of the time is that all of these images tend to be um, base64 encoded. Like you go and look up most of them and they're usually all base64 encoded. But the big ones here, when you go and get their image location, right, it tends to be an actual URL. So what Google's doing is they're trying, to, they're trying to find fast ways to load all of these images. Because remember how we said you can only load so many concurrently? So they're like, okay, they just give you like one page back which has all the images encoded in it. And then any bigger images they won't encode because that would be like just very inefficient. So they actually give you the real URL. So there's like a mix of approaches here. Um, but yeah, Base64 great for small because you can just send one request back with like 20 images in it. Um, and you're not dealing with any browsers or concurrency or anything like that. There is no right or wrong way. That's just a bit of background information. But um, And you can do this with PNGs and JPEGs. They both work fine. Um, that's really the crux of it. Hopefully that gives you some background on some of the, I guess, slider details about what all these different types of images and things you see are around the internet and how they work with our HTML web pages.